is good y'all it is september 22nd my name is kenny cams and this is the black show what's good y'all how's everybody doing this rainy morning in milwaukee uh the highway is wild bro like they're doing all this construction but like it's a lot of little gaps where it's a bunch of water at like a whole bunch so that was a little bit interesting this morning um but they seem like they're getting some some pretty good progress on this so i ain't gonna get down on it too much and it seemed like it's gonna be nice i wouldn't be surprised if they put tolls on there though um so today's episode is going to go a couple different places. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about in this episode is something I've been feeling for a while, man. Not initially right after COVID, but definitely in the last couple of years, man. Like, does life still feel real to other people? Because it definitely doesn't to me anymore. Um, and I know that sounds crazy, but it legit feels like I'm in a Sims video game. But my person that's playing my Sim kind of just gave me autonomy to do what I want. So I don't really have a lot of the Sim type effects. But it definitely feels like that. And it feels like that part in the Sims where, because all of us played the Sims growing up. Um, when you would get tired of that family that you was playing with on the Sims and you was about to start creating a new one, and you just kind of let shit happen. Like, you're like, let's see what happened if the house burned down. Let's see what happened if he don't go to work. Like, that's that's how I feel like we're getting into now. And I feel like that's, that's what's going on right now. Because it's, it's so much stuff. Like, not even in... I used to be a real big person to look on the um the big scale, right? Of, like, what's going on with the government and all the conspiracies and stuff like that. And I'm going to talk about that in this episode, I think. Um. I used to be all into that shit, right? Like, the government's doing A, B, C, and D, and uh, so-and-so is so, uh, Hillary Clinton, and, like, then I realized, once I got more, like, life experience and got off the internet with that shit and, like, start being around people, I realized that most regular people are like that. Um, So, we in a situation where it's, like, the the people that have power are shitty, but the people that don't have power are just as shitty. Like it's it's not really a difference between um Hillary Clinton or Trump and your average person. That's the reason why people the people that so at this point in the game, anybody that has like a deep seated like hate for Trump and can't like see what's going on or don't doesn't want to um acknowledge that they like he's been politically prosecuted. Clearly, it's something that the other side doesn't like about him and they're willing to try to take them out twice put 40 something cases on them impeach them like so if you're not willing to acknowledge that fact red flag for me first off dealing with people the second part of that is trump jimmy Dore says it so i didn't make this up jimmy Dore brought this to my attention like and i noticed it in my real life the people that despise trump are the exact same personality as trump and what Trump does is put all of their insecurities on the surface. And they can't watch it. That's why they, like, automatically despise Trump. Because especially during COVID, man, a lot of the people that I thought were kind, liberal people turned into actual Nazis during all of this stuff. And authoritarians and just, they, they weren't good people. And, like, I was, I'm more disappointed by that, man. Because I, as a person, like to see the best in everybody. I know people could talk about that shit, but I, I truly do that. Like anybody that interacts with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis knows it's a lot different than what is perceived to be on the internet. And that's cause I'm in every situation I'm in. So any experience I'm in, I'm fully in. I'm not worrying about the subtext or worrying about none of that. Like if somebody screws me over, they just screw me over and I learn from it and I try to try not to make it happen again. And that's that's how I move. So like and I think I realize that everybody else moves with this like subtext of like, what what is this person trying to do? And that's just it's not how I move. And I get it because it's a reason why people do that, I'm guessing. But I've had a lot of shitty stuff happen to me in my life. And I still don't move that way. Like I, reasonably so, I shouldn't trust anybody. 
over my experiences that I've had, especially females in dating, I shouldn't trust. I had a, a girl break up. We broke up, and in two months, she was pregnant. <laughs> and that was like when I was like, like after college, I had a a girl cheat on me the whole time, and it accused me of cheating, like with a with an ex. Like so, I'm like, why I shouldn't trust females, but I do because why? I I genuinely, and it's gonna sound like I don't know how it's gonna sound. I genuinely love the concept of love. I realize that it's not really a common thing. Um, especially with people that you weren't raised with and you ain't spent a lot of time with in your like formative years. But I, I love that concept, man. I love in movies like um The Notebook is a terrible, terrible concept movie. It's, she's a cheater. The Notebook is basically what I lived, but I was the guy that was married to or that was with Rachel McAdams, whatever her name is. <laughs> that's that's basically my last relationship was the notebook. So like I shouldn't trust women, but I do. I do. And I'm like, I'm willing to date, but I talk, I think I talk about that in this episode or I got like four or five episodes coming today that I, I speak on this shit. Um, but so this is something that Harold, shout out Harold, uh, Harold Dean from HD's, um, big Harold, uh, big Harold's house. My bad y'all. It's early. Um, it made him talk about this a lot about if we are living in a matrix or not. Right. And I'm kind of torn behind it because like, I kind of fully believe it. Like it's it'd be super super interesting because then it's like all right if we're in a matrix if we're in because the matrix is a video game so if we're in a video game who has the controllers that's the part that's super interesting to me that's why I'm like I'm kind of I would and how my brain works I would kind of lean towards being a matrix because that's just how my like I like conspiracy it's interesting to me it's not like oh I believe everything I see in the, on the internet it's interesting like that's. And I, I'll keep, I, I think that's later in the episode. So, um, but I'm torn on this because like I've traveled around this country and just this country. I've never been outside of the country. Um, I've been to like every part of this country, but I've never been outside of this country. And like people, when you travel, you understand it is such a beautiful place. The earth is a beautiful place. Like when you get down to the mountain west area or even like the trees in the southeast like in the northeast it's not really a lot it's kind of a lot of city like that's the one thing a lot a lot of people don't understand from like new jersey new york connecticut that whole stretch right there is pretty much one big ass city they say it's different cities but it's pretty much one big ass city so highway that connect them all so it's not a lot up there, but even in Wisconsin, it was this post like I saw on Facebook that was talking about Wisconsin. And like I being a football coach, I had to and I was recruiting. So and I recruited for a couple of different schools and they would put me in different areas. So like I've been all around the state too, going to the high schools and like Wisconsin is a people that like just stay in Milwaukee or stay in the lower half of the state or the eastern half of the state don't know that like when you get to the western half of the state, we got like bluffs and shit. Like when you get to the northern half, we got like mountains and stuff. It's pyramids here. It's the mounds. It's the caves. Like it's a bunch of stuff here that like most people and most of my culture never has done. And it's not that far away. It's not like two, three, four hour drive. Like Cave of the Mounds is like an hour and a half away. And it's just such a dope experience for kids to go see that. Like I was in my last relationship. I took my um ex and her son to go do that because it was like one. I had my dog had just died, so I was sad. I love Mellow. <laughs> But uh, like it, stuff like that is everywhere, and no one really gets out and sees it. So I I don't want to say it's a a matrix because that means all of that's not like, and and I I believe in the source or creator. I'm not really religious, so I believe that it's something that's making all of this stuff. But I don't want it to be a computer. I don't. I want it to be something with consciousness that purposely put all this stuff together. I, I, I want it to be something that's purposely made us how we are, purposely put us in this game to see who can survive. I want I don't want chance. I'd rather it be, especially if it's like if we're playing the ultimate game, I'd rather it be something like that. Um, I do wonder. So over the past, and I know people that like are on the, the woke algorithm um, probably get this like the shift from the third to the fifth dimension. Right. And I want to say, man, like. 
I even all the spiritual stuff on the internet are like the Anunnaki and Planet X and Dimensions and anything you could think of. Dog. I don't believe in none of it anymore. I get all my information from about 10 or 11 reporters that I've seen be consistent during COVID that do that work like Whitney Webb is in Venezuela. Um, Aaron Mate is in the States. He might be in Can- um, Canada now. No, he wouldn't be. In, he might be in the uh, UK. But so they, I get my news from around the world. And then my sister and my mom live in a different country that has completely different. If y'all knew how differently the, the, that second Trump shooting was reported here to in UAE, my mom was telling me what was going on. It blew my mind how different they was reporting it here. I told her that. Too. I was like, it's so different how they're reporting this here. But <clears throat> most of the people on the Internet. I've realized like, and I realize why people don't be believing that I be talking what I'm talking about. Cause most of the people on the internet is just bullshit and just f- like fucking with you. Like I put out yesterday, I put out a manual for like any artists that want to become, uh, that want to do music independently and still monetize it. It takes a while, but, and I'm eventually turning it into a book, but I'm releasing it on my sub stack. It's like kind of like a manual by manual. So it's going to be about 10 pay. It's going to be about 10 different sections that's going to be on Substack, but I'm going to put it together as a book and publish it so that any artist that, and if the thing is, I'm realizing that people are in it for different reasons. Like I, I'm telling you all the autism makes mo- so much more sense now how my life is like, how things have ha- occurred and things have happened. Cause like, I, I just don't understand that way of thinking. Like I only do stuff I'm passionate about and it's not like that music, but, um, and just in general, like the internet is like the most toxic, hateful place ever. Like I'm I'm done with Facebook because of that. I realize like I'm on the fifth dimension if it is one. And most of the people on my Facebook are in the third. So everything I say to them just looks absolutely batshit crazy. Which is which is cool. I get it. I get it. I don't even take offense to it. Um so growing up, I had this like and I wonder if I'm as I'm asking the audience, is it was this a similar thing for you? That's why I wonder this predictive programming shit is really real. Cause so when I first saw the Truman show, right? I loved Jim Carrey when I was a kid. I love the mask. I love um all of his movies, dog. Like, he was the funniest person in the world to me. And then if you see the movie where he kind of lost his mind at, where he was playing, I forgot the guy's name, but a Saturday Night Live guy. And like he went completely into character, like completely into character. He's a method actor. I'm kind of a method actor, actor too, I think, because I can get into character real quick. Um, but I had this like feeling that everyone, that I, like you know, that's that where that main character syndrome comes from. But like it's weird because in my life, I never really had main character syndrome. Always had like supporting character syndrome. Like I was always, I always positioned myself to be the help of the friend that's going to be successful. Like, man, people know. And I, I, I did say last night, I'm just going to start talking way more freely on here and just, I'm going to start saying names and stuff like that. But like people know what Brandon Brooks, like me and Brandon was so co- close in high school, dog. Like I picked that nigga up for school every day and I seen, and we, we're not on the best of terms now. And that was kind of my choice. Um, just, well, y'all see what's happening in Hollywood. But, like, I always supported everyone else's dreams. I never really focused on my stuff. And then I took a year kind of focusing on my stuff. And I'm going to talk about this in a different episode today, too. Like, and I see that I can just make stuff happen if I, like, just focus on my energy. But I notice when I focus on my energy, people get, like, upset at me when I focus on myself. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know. Like, is that something that happens to everybody or is it just me? But, like, when I say y'all, and hopefully you can see the sincerity that's in my eyes, like, I really don't bother nobody. Like, I I don't mess with nobody. I don't be out. I don't talk to nigga girls. I don't even, I I talk shit about how good I am at what I've been doing for, like, 15 years, all like, almost every day, which is fair. That's like a hooper saying he can hoop or, like, a painter saying they can paint. Like, I can do this stuff. But I still get the hate. Like, not even the hate. I get the, the, 
because it's, it's a lot of closed door behind stuff talking like real feminine ways of acting i still get the like oh he thinks he better than and stuff like that like i i'm i'm over that bro like i've clearly expressed to y'all i don't do subtext i'm tired of doing that shit i've clearly expressed to everybody that that's not my intention so if you don't want to believe it peace out on that i'm i'm good with dealing with you because I'm, I'm tired i'm so tired of that y'all and that goes into my next point of feeling disconnected like i've been reflecting on this because i'm like i legit was like am i depression i'm like nah it's not depression depression because I've, I've had depression before before this ain't that like because i feel motivated i just don't have a try i feel disconnected bro like and when i mean that like I'll be wondering, am I, am I missing something? Am I, am I, I the, the autism, so autism allows me to see like complex patterns, right? But I, I sometimes on a simple everyday stuff, I just miss stuff. So like, I, I don't know what my community, the black community expects from itself, from me. No, I just don't understand it. I don't understand what they want or where they're trying to go or anything like that. So that's why I said I feel disconnected from my culture. Like, and that's one of the worst feelings, man. I, I understand now why females will just go along with shit so they don't, like, get pushed out of the group. Because it's fucking lonely, y'all. Like, it is. It is. It's a lonely way to live. Like, and I do stuff and all of that stuff like that. But not having anyone that can, like, you can truly relate to or you can truly speak openly and freely without having to touch around their triggers and when, like, I speak, so it's people that will say I'm easily triggered when, like, I did, I, I listen to y'all bullshit all day and don't say nothing. But I'm triggered because when I say something that I, as well researched and not from the mainstream media, I get ultimate pushback. And when I'm like, okay, well, no, you can find it here, here. That's me being triggered. Like, it's a bunch of gaslighting weird people, man. And that's just not, like, what I want to be around. Um... So when I started this studio, right, I, I had been doing this for a long time. A lot of people say, no, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, my silly ass assumed everybody would be like, okay, we got one. Let's go. Let's, let's hit the ground running. Let's go. Let's make music. And, like, I look back at that and I laugh at myself. Like, I was expecting people to match the passion I had to want to do this. And I'm not saying that from a disrespectful way or just nothing. It's just an observation. Like, I work really, really hard, and I want to be around people that work really, really hard. And when I see people that don't work really, really hard, I don't have a lot of incentive to work with them. And that goes back to, like, the school thing where, like, you – I don't want to do all the work for the project. Because I've, I've done that so many times, and, like, I have literally haven't made a dime, really. It's been all investment on the studio. So, like – and I'm going to talk about another episode of that, but I'm putting a, a shorter timeline on this – and then I'm going to move a little bit differently and, and have some other options just because of all of the nonsense that's like came with even opening this studio. Like, I don't understand it why I can't win to people. Like, everybody else can win. Like, shout out Chicken. Chicken's got selected for it. I think he might be selected for uh, XXL. And, and man, Chicken has been the co him and Munch. I'm like, Chicken and Munch held this city up on their back from, my, from the time we graduated high school, like, till, like, now. They held this, and Munch, Munch has kind of went behind the scenes a little bit, but Munch still be mixing and still be recording people and doing his thing. But Chicken and Munch have held this shit, and we make completely different music. I don't know them personally. I think me and Chicken got some family connections. Of like, I think my people and his people are people. But I got a whole lot of people in the city, so who knows? Um, but I respect them cats so much, man, because, like, and that's that's almost why I'm taking the method of, like, separate, stepping away from y'all having so much access to me. Because, and I think Chicken learned that in that situation that he had that, 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 that was super janky. Um, that, like, bro, these people don't love you here. Milwaukee really just wants to see you fail. The people that support me are my homeboys. Like, shout out Minervini. Shout out, like, the people that actually are looking. Mike, you know, like, Kelly, Byron, and all of them. Like, them the people that actually support me. Jeff, you know what I mean? Christina, 
like Candace, like them is the people that actually truly support me. And like, besides that, the rest of the city just wants to see somebody fall. Like I thought about it, even with that Harvey scale shit, like Harvey was so OC and y'all saw that for so long. And y'all let that shit go on for so long. Like it was my last straw with that video. I could have said something a year ago with sh- how he was moving with Shorty. As soon as I said something, what happened? It all fell apart. As it should have, because it was janky. But, like, y'all seen that, man. Why I got to be the one to say it so I got to take the arrows from everybody? At, like, oh, here he go again. When y'all could speak up on this. When y'all be waiting for me to say it and waiting for me to do stuff like that or waiting for me to make moves to see if it fails. And then y'all will come in. And that's a coward way to move and, like, I just can't be around people like that. Also, this studio is brought, I, I was, I had such a peaceful way to live before this, man. Like I was in my own world, making my stuff, doing all the stuff I was doing. But like now, and like Dot might get upset with me on this, but like it's people reaching out to Dot. Dot is a dope ass artist. I think me and him had this conversation like, bro, if these, it's, it's, if these niggas is reaching out to you to try to see, oh, is is what Kenny got real? And that might just be my ego talking. They may just be on some real they they want. And because Dot dope. But I was like, if that is what it is, bro, make your money off these niggas, man. Because that's whack, bro. Like, why is people so concerned about my situation all the time, bro? When I, I don't. I just talk shit on Facebook and make videos in my studio and make music. Like, besides that, my life is, and I, I think that's what it is. A lot of people are looking for, what is this nigga doing? I'm boring as shit, y'all. That's why I'm single now. I'm boring. I got cheated on last time. I'm boring. I know that. But my goals aren't y'all goals. So what's boring to y'all is work to me. And what's work to me is boring to y'all. So like I'm cool with it. I've I've accepted that as a fact. You know what I mean? So I can't, I don't really trip on that. Um and I just I just get into part of the dating life. Like I've dated in Milwaukee since I've been back, right? I'm not going to lie. It's one girl that I do want to talk to still that I haven't had the chance to be around um, in person yet that we've had like communication and stuff. But besides her, like, and I don't even know her personality. I'm just more attracted to her work ethic, if that makes sense. Um, I know my per- my personality is a little bit different compared to most people, but in real life, it ain't that much different, bro. Like, actually... I, I, I'm on the surface. So like you get what you get with me. And like speaking on my last relationships, like I I'm, I'm not investing anything into a woman to where she just can feel a different way and go somewhere else. Like that's the part I think women don't understand. Like that's such a shitty, you're a shitty person for that. You have no character or morals. And once I realized that women don't really value character, because they never really have to have it. Because if you're pretty, you get lied to your whole life and you pretty much get your way. And I think people give me that like, oh, well, because he's a good looking dude. Like, bro, I was fat for like most of my adult years. Like my sexually active years from like 18 to now, I've been fat for most of it. I was in a relationship for the other part. And I'm this is my first time being single where I can actually move around. Or I was broke. I'm talk about that too, man. Um. But it's it's not even a shot at women, though. Like, I get I got a very specific personality type. I get it. And the women that I like or, like, the personality types that I like, m- typically I found most of them are married or they're, like, in a serious relationship. So I'm, like, I just kind of aged out of it because, like, I'm not – I tried to to talk to a 27-year-old for real, man. It was so much goddamn game playing, bro. I just – I blocked her. I blocked her. It's too much influence going on there. Like, and I don't really date for short term relationships. Like the 27 year old, she's, she really just wanted it to be like a hookup thing. And I'm like, fam, I'm 30 fucking five, yo. Like I'm not finna just be, I don't do sneaky links. I don't do that shit, man. I got too much other shit going on to be trying to text and do, I don't do that, man. Like, I'm sorry. That's why I realized, like, I was like, relationships, maybe it's just for me right now. Relationships may just not be for me. And I know on our Monday show, uh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask Christina about this and see her opinion on this. HD, 
to be my sounding board on this, but like it's not a negative thing. It's just like it's just not a realistic thing to me. Like, cause the way I so the the, the way I talk about news and everything like that. It's so far outside of the, the normal radar that it scares women away to be like, oh, he must be crazy. And again, I know I have factual evidence from um, I'm going to say her name. We went to high school with her. Uh, I ain't gonna say her name. Went to high school with her, though. But my ex messaged her to tell this is my recent ex that I was like a wife beater. Or a girlfriend beater. And then she deleted it. And the girl texted me like, what is what is this? Or like, what's wrong with her? And I'm like, fam, if y'all really know <laughs> the bullshit during all of that. So, like, that that stuff goes off my shoulder now because I'm like, I don't know what's been said about me. I don't know what the perception of me is here. So I'm just going to kind of let leave it alone. And, like, I genuinely like to help others develop stuff. Like, I, that's that's I'm a producer. I, I like to I like to form the I help form the idea and shape it and turn it into real life. And I realized that working with people around here, um, they don't really want to collaborate genuinely. It's always a motive to it. It's always a, and I like, especially with this studio, man, my dream of it was to, to create something like Dame did in Harlem with currency. It was a bunch of dope artists there, man, just interacting and, and like having that, real creative vibe where real music can be made real music the reason why milwaukee ain't made it y'all and i'm gonna tell you the real reason why like jp makes it like that's our biggest one jp is because he's really making music he's just making what's on his heart y'all and if people like it cool but like there's so many musicians here that's making music to be famous and it's, I'm like, dog, that's so whack. Like, y'all y'all see this Diddy stuff. Y'all see what the industry is. And y'all still want it. And the crazy part is a lot of them still would do it. A lot of them would switch shoes with Meek Mill with that tape out and, like, all that. They would switch shoes with Meek Mill in a day. I would not. I'd rather be poor, homeless, than do what they did for fame. And I've kind of showed that. <laughs> in real life, I kind of showed that. Like, and even now at the studio, man, it's 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 funny because it's people that's trying to get to me personally through other people to see if what I got is real. And I said, I'm transparent. I invested all of my money in the studio. Every penny. Every penny. This is my full time job. And I, I like to bring this up a lot. When my dad passed, I didn't get no money. My grandma, I didn't get nothing from nothing. Like I've literally, it's just work. It's working God. That's it. Like I, and that's the misconception of like, oh, he don't deserve that. Like why? I literally worked for every bit of it. I haven't got anything from anyone in this whole process at all. I've been floating this whole month without like just coming in here and doing the show. And I'm gonna be honest, like I'm not, it's not sustainable. It's if people aren't going to come record or buy beats or like any of that stuff, like it's just not sustainable. And that's kind of why I'm canceling my Facebook and stuff. Cause I'm like, bro, I got on my United masters thing. I got like 70 some beats on there. Right. The lease is 29 99. No one, I, I'm going to like one or two views. I'm like shadow banned everywhere, everywhere. It, it It's like, statistically impossible that people aren't seeing my stuff or aren't buying it. So I'm like, it's either me, it's, it's, either, it's either I'm, I'm giving off a, a terrible energy, which is possible or like it's, it's not supposed to happen or like it's purpose or it's personal. And I'm like, if it's personal, why? I don't understand it. I don't know none of you niggas personally. Like even the person I talked about before, I don't know him. Per- I knew him in high school. I don't know you personally. We haven't interacted. I haven't seen you in person since we was kids. So why does he, why do you, like, I, that's the part I don't understand. And, like, I know y'all don't want to believe it, man. This shit looks easy to do. It takes a lot of time and effort and thought, man. And, like, I'm not making material to go viral. I'm making material to build a solid off audience. And I'm content with my, like, 50 to 100 daily listeners that listen to the black show and just I'm cool with that like 
everybody ain't aiming to be Jay-Z. I don't want to be them niggas. I was talking, talking to my mom about this. Like, I see everybody's energy. Like, everybody wants to be big and famous. I don't. I just want to be able to support. I want to be able to make enough money to, to come do this podcast, help some people out, and travel a little bit. That's all I want. I don't want to be Grammys. and I don't care about none of that stuff at all, at all. If, it, if I did a couple years ago, <clears throat> a couple years ago, I could have put my position in to get all of that. But I saw what it was, and I'm like, nah, that's not for me, yo. I, I think long term, that's not for me. So, like, it's, I feel like it's a lot of energy that's ho- watching this and watching this experiment of what I'm doing and literally hoping it fails just so they can say it fails. And that's the thing I think a lot of people don't get with me. I'm okay with saying this studio has not gone as I planned. I'm okay with saying the studio is starting to me look like a little bit of a failure. And it may be because of my personality. It may be because people ain't got no money to buy studio time. It, it may be that, but like, I'm okay with saying I failed. I thought wrong. It wasn't, a, I made a wrong move there and then learning from it. And then the next time I do this, cause that's the thing. I think a lot of people do stuff and they going for money. I've had a studio in my, I have a studio. I had a studio since I've been 18. It's either in my dorm or in my office. So this is not something that's like I'm just doing to make money. I just wanted a studio. So like I said I had a studio. And I did. I got a studio downtown. Um, I got a studio downtown around. I got legitimate businesses by me. I came in and made this thing pretty. Like this is a success to me. From a lot, all I had a lot of failures in my life. So this is a success. Even if it doesn't go as expected, this is still a success to me. Like, I got to come and show my mama, I, like, yeah, I got a business downtown. I got to quit my job, go full time. If even if it's for a little bit amount of time, like I'm okay with that. And I think that's what people just they 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 think that's a shame thing. Like, no, because even this right here, I'm doing something that like 99.9 percent of the population wouldn't and couldn't do. I'm grateful for that, man. Like, that's the part where I don't vibe with a lot of these rappers. It's no, it's it's a it's a sense of entitlement with it. Um, also, man, I'm tired of people hiding their intentions, dog. Like, I'm gonna say this in the most respectful way. If I see you interacting with people that I know don't like me, I am gonna be very, very guarded with you going forward. Why? Because in my mind, I don't know if that was planned from the get go. I've had that happen to me. So you can't get mad. People can't get mad at me for reacting the way when I've had stuff like that happen to me. So I'm going to react that way. Like nobody gives me the benefit of the doubt. So I'm not really going to give people the benefit of the doubt no more. You got to show me what you are. And there's so many people that like move with manipulation. I talked about it's a lot of rappers here. Like my intention has been clear from the go. I state my intentions like I, you don't have to think what's his angle because I don't have one. Blame it on the autism. I'm on the surface. I'm like, and I'm tired of li- people like, aren't people tired of living that way of like subtext and trying to like, you add an unneeded stress to your life, man. And like, I realize that most people really don't enjoy life, enjoy their life because they don't enjoy living day to day. I enjoy my day to day life and I'm thankful and grateful for that. So thank y'all for listening. Longer episode of the black show. Y'all um, it's Kenny cams. Y'all I'm out. Peace. Where you like, where you, like? Where you going? Where you going from the city, from the city. Girl, I know it. you for the city, for the city. Girl, I know it. To the prize man, where the coins at? Shorty about to get respect. Don't shake the cage, put the coins in, it's about respect. Shorty hot, where that palm trees? JT like mama seek to bring your finance over here and try up on this margarita. Passport get stamped out, red light turn lamped out. We don't care what they care about, we don't share what they share about. We don't lay where they lay at, we don't stay where they stay at. I play when I play that, I'm a gym my ass. So shorty, what you mean? Cause I got five on it. Shorty, what you need? Cause I got five on it. Cause I got five on it. Now it's on it. You gotta spin it. Shorty, you know as it's a lot of women. Let's try to get it. Let's try to get it. She said she wants the diamonds on it. You gotta spin it.
Shorty, you know it's a lot. A lot of women. Hey, let's try and get it.